Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the forearm. So guys know that the forearm is composed of these two bones, which is the ulna that is near to our body, it's the medial bone, and the radius that is far from our body, which is the lateral bone. Now, we, everyone knows by now the proximal part of ulna and how is it um, featured and how do we know the, um, um, the, the structure of the proximal part. And now let's talk about the shaft and the distal end of ulna and radius. Now, if you think about the ulna and radius, you, if you take a cross section from both of them, you will find that they are kind of triangular in shape. It means that they have three borders, border one, border two, border three, border one, border two, border three. One of them is facing the other, and the one that faces the other is what forms the interosseous membrane. Interosseous, it means between bones. Osseous in Latin means bones enter it means between them. So because the, 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 uh, the, the syndesmosis uh, or the fibrous connective tissue that connects them here, we call it interosseous membrane, we call this border as interosseous border. All right, so the sharp one that is facing the other is called the interosseous uh, border. All right, now the other ones are going to be, if I'm facing anteriorly, it's going to be anterior border. If I'm facing posteriorly, it's going to be a posterior border for both of them. Now, these three borders will give me three surfaces, all right? So how can I memorize the surfaces? Okay, you have anterior border, so you have anterior surface. You have posterior border, so you have posterior surface. You have interosseous border, and what is opposite to it is going to be a surface. How can I remember what kind of surface will be? The surface of the medial bone is medial surface and the surface for the lateral bone is lateral surface. Now what about the interosseous border? It's very easy. The interosseous membrane is between them. So my medial bone interosseous border will be lateral border and my lateral bone interosseous border will be medial border. Okay, so it makes sense. You just spread your arm, spread your, um, um, extend your elbow, spread your forearm, look at your forearm, and you will know how to tell the names of the borders and the um, surfaces. Uh, we have two easy ones, anterior and posterior, surfaces and borders. And we have one interosseous border, and you know what do we call it for the medial bone and for the lateral bone. And the surface for the medial bone is medial surface, for the lateral bone is lateral surface. All right? Now, now we talked about the, um, uh, the, the shaft of both bones. All right? And uh, now we need to move on to talk about the distal part of the bones. Now, the distal part of the bones, both of them, they have a, a process that is pillar-like. And pillar-like means in Latin or Greek, uh, styloid. All right. So we have styloid process of radius and we have styloid process of ulna. And that will help you to how to hold the bone in anatomically correct position because you know that the radius is lateral. So the styloid process of it would be lateral and the ulna bone is medial. So the styloid process of ulna would be medial. So that way and knowing how to orient yourself up uh, from the previous uh, videos, it will make you to hold them in anatomically correct position. Remember that previously, guys, we said that we have the radio ulnar joints, we have proximal one, we have distal one, and middle, which is the interosseous membrane. Remember what I told you how to remember the uh, what forms the radio ulnar? It's called radio ulnar. It means from the head of radius, the proximal one, and the radial notch on ulna. And the opposite is true here. It's going to be between the head of ulna and ulnar notch on radius all right and the distal end of radius is basically broad because that is going to make your rest joint so the radius distal end of radius with the two proximal um, proximal lateral carpal bones is gonna make your radiocarpal uh, joint and we're going to talk about that in the wrist joint and um, uh, so these uh, the, the distal end is broad 
of the radius and that is to accommodate the two bones however for the uh, ulna um, it, it, it forms part of the rest joint but it does not articulate with a bone there is an articular disc so there will be uh, articular disc below that here all right so uh, that way you will have a wrist joint all right so the wrist joint they call it radiocarpal because it's predominantly formed between the distal broad end of radius and the two proximal distal uh, uh, carpal bones because we have carpal bones we have proximal row and distal row and we're going to talk about that in the wrist joint all right and if you look at the uh, distal end of radius you will find what we uh, talked about the styloid process uh, you will find the ulnar notch um, for the ulnar head for the for the distal ra uh, radio sorry um, uh, radio ulnar joint yeah and then here you have um, uh, the, the part of the bone the uh, the distal end of radius will articulate and form the radio carpal and we're going to talk about the carpals and how to memorize them and how we remember the exact attachment between them and now here we have the interosseous membrane when we have them together and um, you, ha you will have um, a space above and that is going to be for the transmission of the posterior interosseous artery and you will have an aperture down because you need to transmit the other uh, brother or sister which is the anterior interosseous artery. Why? Because remember guys when we talked about the uh, brachial artery we said that the brachial artery comes all the way and once it comes to the level of the brachial uh, sorry the radial neck it's going to be giving us ulnar and radial arteries and the ulnar artery will give you common interosseous and that common interosseous common because it gives anterior and posterior now you are already anterior all right so if you are common you will give anterior that runs anterior to the interosseous membrane all right so um let's just delete this all right so you will have the common it will give you anterior that runs anteriorly and it will give you posteriorly that goes from the opening above the interosseous membrane so that it can run posterior to the interosseous that's why we call it posterior interosseous all right and it takes care of everything at the back deep anything deep we will refer it uh, as uh, interosseous and then once you come down here the anterior one uh, needs to follow its sister so it's going to be uh, moving on uh, from the aperture to reach the back side all right back side it will go to the back side all right so in the interosseous membrane um, in the proximal end we have the posterior interosseous artery moving through this to supply structures at the back and the aperture down will transmit the its sister or its brother all right to reach the posterior compartment all right now um, I just want to say an idea here and uh, and then we're going to move on to talk about the muscles now what is the idea now now guys we will talk about the muscles of the forearm the the anterior muscles and the posterior muscles and we are talk about the attachment i just want to tell you we have two pronator's muscles pronator teres and pronator quadratus and we have one supinator muscle whenever we say it's a pronator muscle or supinator it means that this muscle is coming out from ulna to radius why because can you guys see the picture whenever you do pronation or supination what is moving actually is the radius the radius is rotating on the ulna so in order for you to move the radius it means this is your insertion attachment so it makes sense that the pronator teres the pronator quadratus and the supinator three of them they originate from the ulna and they insert themselves into the radius the pronator teres is up the pronator quadratus is down and the supinator has two heads one of the heads is the lateral epicondyle and the other head is the uh, ulna itself all right because this is following our rule 